Hi students, this is Mrs. Lawrence from Schmucker Middle School. Today we will be talking about citing evidence in nonfiction text. Now, part of the reason that we will be talking about this today has to do with the standard 7.RN.2.1. But the part of the standard we will specifically be working on today is the learning goal of I can cite several pieces of textual evidence to support my inferences. Notice those bolded words, cite, textual evidence, and inferences. We will talk, we will talk more about those. Citing means to refer to information from a source or a text. Now, to cite something doesn't just mean to quote something. This also means we have to introduce from where we gathered that information. So where did I find it? For example, in paragraph four, the author, Christina Lawrence, writes, we can all be successful during this lesson. Success may look different for each of us. Notice, I have included the author, Christina Lawrence, and the paragraph that I could find that information. Sometimes we might include the title of the document or source that we gathered the information, and then we provide the evidence, or in this case, a quote from that source. So remember, citing is not just putting a quote, it's also about introducing that information or where we found it. Inferences are educated guesses made about the meaning of a text. When we draw inferences, we have to read between the lines and make an educated guess based on what we already know about our world, ourselves, or what we might be reading. So, when answering a question, one strategy we can use to help us is by using the acronym RACE to make sure your written response has all the parts the answer needs. RACE stands for restating the question, answering the question, in the source, citing the source, and explaining the source. Today, we will really be focusing on these two elements. Making an inference is connected to citing and explaining evidence. Let me explain. So if I take a look at this passage, while many people seek comfort, some frustrations have surfaced for all the togetherness. Nicole Ellis is a professional dog trainer for Rover.com in Los Angeles, California. Ellis said owners should make a conscious effort to tire out their animals before a Zoom meeting or important phone call. Think about what you know about dogs. If a dog is tired, they will rest or sleep. If dogs are not tired, they might bark more. They might seek attention by begging or trying to play. So when Nicole Ellis, the dog trainer in this passage, recommends that people should tire out their dogs before a Zoom meeting. She does this because we can infer that owners should take their dogs for maybe a walk or play with them so that they, the owner isn't interrupted during an important meeting or phone call. Hiring out animals before a Zoom meeting is one way to help eliminate distractions during a learning because our pets won't be barking while we are in our class meeting. So, if the question given to me is, how can we eliminate distractions during virtual learning? I know by looking back at this passage I read, one piece of evidence that proves the question is owners should make a conscious effort to tire out their animals. But remember, when I cite information, I cannot just put the quote. 
I also have to introduce where I found that information or who said that information. So my example of cite, citing is, according to Nicole Ellis, notice I said where I got this information, owners should make a conscious effort to tire out their animals before a Zoom meeting. So now I've also included a quote to prove my point. But the quote itself doesn't prove my point. I have to also explain how this supports my answer. So my explanation sounds like this. By tiring out a dog before the meeting, we are less likely to be interrupted by its barking. This will help us stay more focused during virtual learning. That explanation now proves how the quote supports us eliminating distractions. To summarize, I mean evidence supports our ideas. We must cite that evidence by introducing where we found it. We must also prove how that evidence supports our ideas by explaining what the evidence means and how it proves our point. I can't just assume that the person I'm talking to understands how my evidence supports my answer. I have to explain it. I have to prove it. Just like an attorney would have to, would have to prove it in a courtroom when they are proving their case. It's not enough to find the evidence. We have to be able to explain how the evidence supports our ideas. And race is just one strategy we can use to help us create an organized response to the question. So to recap, our learning goal was I can cite several pieces of textual evidence to support my inferences. I need to make sure that I cited information and that I explained how it supported my ideas.